In this problem, we're multiplying square roots. In other words, we're taking this root, multiplying it by itself. So really what that means is taking the square root of 2, and we're squaring it. And then we're doing the same thing here. We're taking the square root of 3 and squaring that. Here we're taking the square root of 4 and squaring that. And then the last problem, we're taking the square root of 5 and squaring that. Now squaring and roots are inverse operations. But before I go further talking about that, let's use this simple example to understand what's going to happen in these tougher examples. Well, let's solve this, right? We have the square root of 4 times the square root of 4. What is the square root of 4? Well, it's 2. Okay, and this is 2. So this really is equal to 2 times 2, and that's 4. If you think about what's happening here, if we had a square, you're saying the square root is 4, the, squ the square root of 4, times the square root of 4. So that means you're taking two side lengths, the square root of 4, times the square root of 4, multiplying them. The area should be 2 times 2, or 4. So basically, we're squaring the square roots. And notice that what happened was, we took the square root of 4 times the square root of 4, and our answer was just... Four. So in general, you can say that the square root of a times the square root of any other number a is always going to equal a. Why? Because, well, we're squaring the root. Squares and square roots are inverses. So that means that in each of these, I hope that's making sense, the square root of 3 squared is just 3, and the square root of 2 squared is 2, and the square root of 5 squared is 5. Now in other videos, I'll try to get more in depth into this, but this is such a useful rule that I, that I had to share this problem. All right, thanks.